just a uh, thermidor or two. I hate lots of thermidor. Uh, wheels from a mini metro, I believe. Have they got to go back? Uh, no. <laughs> And uh, what happened when you let this loose in your house? I hear it got um, a bit out of control. <laughs> it did. We were we were testing the controls out in the kitchen. Probably not the best place to try it in hindsight. Um, it, it got away from us, put a really large dent in the radiator. So a little oh, job for me later. More work. I know. Good luck, team. From Norwich, Thermidor 2. Got broiled in the last wars when the claws couldn't get to grips. The Shell's aluminium power comes from two 750 watt industrial electric motors, but I fear this might just become a brawn in the game for the more powerful. Last time around, they won their first battle against Blunderstorm fairly easily. But then, when matched with Scutter's Revenge, didn't have enough power and ended up in the pit. Hi, we're Team Lobster, my name's David, this is Ian, this is Eli, this is our robot Thermidor 2. We've got really grippy tyres, uh, powerful claws, powerful flipper, and this war we're going to win. Roboteers, stand by. Chronic the Wedgehog, father and son John and Dave Lang, Mike Gardner in there as well. Thermidor 2, David Harding, Ian Harvey and Eli Kirkpatrick, and Gravedig, another father and son team, John. Chaplin, Dave Chaplin, Owen Ramsey. Two, one, activate. And at the moment, the Wedgehog on the attack on the Lobster. Thermidor 2 rose to the occasion. Chronic the Wedgehog, buffeted by Gravedigger, the seeded robot in this Eliminator. Seeded 13. And pushing in again on the back of the Wedgehog. Smashing Thermidor 2 against the Arena Wall. Lifting underneath Thermidor 2 now is Chronic the Wedgehog with that front flipper, it's pneumatic. Thermidor 2 scuttling away into the deep recesses of the Robot Wars pool to come again. Flipping up on the front of Chronic the Wedgehog. You can see the sparks from the side of the arena, smoke as well. There's the descending pit, you don't want to stay there too long, Chronic. Gravedigger, classic wedge shape with again the hydraulic Ram operating arm, very dangerous grave digger. Get off that arena flipper, Chronic. Thermidor backs away. Look at the claws. Ready to close in. This is a good battle, isn't it? Very, very level so far. Good aggression from all three. In comes Thermidor again, clacking the pincers together. Chronic's been aggressive, but I think Grave Digger has a problem with that weapon. We heard beforehand they had to readjust it, and I don't think the operating arm is operating. Thermidor 2. Oh, one of the claws is gone. Bent back and buckled, and now hangs limp, does it? One of those claws on the front of the Thermidor. Chronic the Wedgehog is the surprise here from Seaton in Devon. Powered by the two C5 motors. And Grave Digger's on its side. Grave Digger, the seeded robot, in major, major trouble. Here was Thermidor doing the damage. Thermidor 2 got in with the flipper at the front of the lobster. Underneath and up and over she goes. Well, Grave Digger could be in a coffin here. And they're digging deep the grave for the digger. And in comes Killalot, a massive 280 kilos. Moving slowly, only 1.8 meters a second kill and off, but when he moves slowly, he moves inexorably. Oh, Grave Digger spun away. Comes back to life now, it would seem, but oh, I think it's too late. I think it was immobilized too long. We'll wait and see. It's trending around the arena floor there, look. But I think the judges will have noted that it was immobilized for too long. We'll wait to hear from Craig, but that was some battle. Grave Digger back to the cemetery. Chronic the Wedgehog and Thermidor 2, they go through. Roboteers, stand by. Thermidor 2 looked pretty impressive against Grave Digger with David Harding, Ian Harvey, and Eli Kirkpatrick. What damage has been caused to Dreadnought by Warhog and by Killalot, I must say. Three, two, one. Let's have a close scrutiny early on then. Well, Dreadnought seems okay to me, but it's Thermidor 2 on the attack straight away with the lobster pincers. And that flipper! One attempt on Dreadnought, and another and overturns Dreadnought! Like a, a beetle thrown on its back. 
great power in this flipper. Looks quite unassuming, but it's one of the strongest weapons we've seen so far in this series. Look at that. Red Nought twisting up in the air, crashing down on its back. Whoosh, over it goes. Now, can Dreadnought ride itself? I don't think so. And I think here we're seeing the end of Dreadnought. Well, Matilda certainly thinks so. The ref bot in there just have a, a close look, and Matilda slices through the fiberglass shell of Dreadnought. We've already seen that lifted off once and through there. Oh, look at that. Slicing through the tyre from the wheelchair. Oh, poor old Dreadnought. Ken Feltwell, Dave Bowles and Young Faino, they're heading out. And it's the Thermidor 2 team from Norwich going through and it's a question here of damage limitation but poor old Dreadnought will any of the wheels with the caster wheels in the top of your picture be left on there under power from Matilda income well all the house robots seem to want to have a go here so what's Dreadnought done to them what's he done to ruffle the feathers of dead metal I wonder onto the arena flipper we know what's going to happen here to Dreadnought oh like a cannonball fired across the arena floor there you see the house robots can come in because Dreadnought was immobilized for so long, so shunt with the axe and the scoop, and there you have Kill a lot armed with the stomach churning rotating drill, the hydraulic cutting claw can slice through armor plating. There's little hope left for Dreadnought. Dave Vows there, brother-in-law of Ken Feltwell, dad of young Faye, and all three of them great competitors. They're back again, they've never missed a robot wars. Super people to be with, still smiling, even though, look at this, their robot has been ripped to shreds. You've got Kill a Lot, you've got Dead Metal in there as well. Oh, goodness me! How much work's gone into Dreadnought for naught? It's just been bent and buckled and down in the pit for mercy's sake. And still smiling, good old Dave. Splendid sports. Well, Dreadnought wins now. The victors are Thermidor. Well, 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 well. You're doing all right, aren't you? Not doing too bad, no. We, we had a few problems just before we came on as well, but the claws wouldn't work for the flipper. Thank God, it did work. The flipper just flipped yeah, it straight it was, away. It was, it was like it was the end of it straight away. That's right, we, we only just met, didn't we? And uh, that was yeah. the end of it, really. And, so. Yeah, you just hit him, you flipped them over, and the house robots came in for the kill. Yeah, we just left him to it. Well, you know, you're through to the next round, lads. Do you think yeah. you can go any further? Well, we'll try. Okay. Let's hear it for Thermidor! Thank you. Thermidor. Hello. Oh, yeah. Your flipper made mincemeat in Dreadnought then, didn't it? It did. It was, uh, it's been intermittent now. We've lost the claws. The claws just stay open. And the, and the claws never did anything really anyway, well, did they? Well, that's what we thought. But uh, <laughs> no, this, uh, the flipper may not do anything either, so but we'll give it a go. <sighs> so you've lost your claws. You've, you've lost your flipper. Well, They've well, got a the, flipper. The flippers, possibly, Ooh. yeah, we don't know. Guys, How are the mini metro wheels holding up? Oh, we're going on to the stage? Well, we need to get on the stage if they can. OK, no okay. time to chat. Give us, a, give us an ETA. Preferably in seconds. Oh, we're ready. Uh, we're ready. We're ready. A minute. A Look minute. at this. Minute. No right. time at all to think on Robot Wars. Uh, last minute screws going in. Do you know what you're doing there, young man? <laughs> yeah. Of course he does. Roboteers, stand by. Is Chronic the Wedgehog the better prepared of the two heat finalists? Dave and John Lang, Mike Gardner. Thermidor 2, David Harding, Ian Harvey, and young Eli Kirkpatrick. Of course, he knew what he was doing, Jules. It's a screwdriver with a screw into a bit of metal. It's not brain surgery, Jules. Thermidor 2 has beaten two seeds so far. <sighs> Women in the pits. Thermidor 2 against Chronic the Wedgehog. She'll kill me for that. <sighs> Chronic the Wedgehog's flipper, and the flipper of Thermidor 2 is working. Now, that was a concern for them. We know that one of the pincers was buckled earlier on. Well, they may not be at their most effective, but they are working. There's the flipper of Chronic the Wedgehog, and the flipper's locked there, look. Well, that's interesting. Locked tight together, and uh, Thermidor 2's flipper up between the flanks of the Wedgehog's flipper. Getting underneath Thermidor 2. It's certainly the more aggressive here, I think, the Wedgehog on the attack. 
coming in away from Thermidor 2 now to come on another drive look, in between the pincers and certainly the more power belongs to Kroner the Wedgehog that's evident there both flippers came into use but it was Thermidor 2 the lobster was sent scurrying back Kroner the Wedgehog oh off comes in flipper well I spoke too soon look at this buckled and torn from the front of the Wedgehog splendid stuff got sort of a half side on to Thermidor 2 and that's why the front flipper was bent and torn straight off so all they can do now I think is buffet the Thermidor towards a pit towards an arena spike towards one of the house robots towards the CPZ they're trying to do that actually this is good driving by the Wedgehog boys trying to force Thermidor 2 back the driver of the team is Dave Lang but Mm, time is running out. They've sustained more damage. May well go to the judges. They'll mark on damage, star control and aggression. It's a terrific heat final. If it goes to the judges, what's happened here to Wedgehog? Thermidor's OK. The Wedgehog was spinning but not moving. I think they were immobilised. I think they lost control. They did in the house robots. You could just see that they started to spin around. Couldn't get any forward momentum. Moving sideways now because Dead Metal has them. Oh dear. And we need now a spiky display by the Wedgehog. And I don't think we're going to get it. I think the Wedgehog is heading for hibernation in the pit of the Robot Wars Arena floor. Because there, Killalot has a grab. Oh, Matilda comes in. Uh, Matilda and the Hog together. Hmm. Doesn't make pleasant thinking, but anyway, a killer lot at the top of your picture. There's Shunt again and Dead Metal! And the Wedgehog! Come on, the Wedgehog! Uh, the Wedgehog! 99. Well, Chronic the Wedgehog are just roadkill. Thermidor are through to the Series semi finals! Thermidor. You might be a crustacean, but you're not a crushed robot. No, much to our surprise. Uh, you're, you're through to the series semi finals. Yeah, we're well pleased. Did you think you'd get this far? No, not really. Because <laughs> I was saying, you were too evenly matched yeah, robots we there. There's been so many good robots this year that looking around, we really thought our chances were slim. But, but like some good robots break down, you never know. I mean, a lot of good robots have gone yeah. out. Yeah, well, ours has got problems. We're going to have to repair it now. I mean, the flipper was half the time working on its own and half the time it didn't do anything. So, so you think you can sort of repair it all for the series semi finals? Well, we hope we can. We yeah. hope we can. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you there. Thank Let's you. hear it for Thermidor! Thermidor 2. David Hardy and Ian Harvey with Thermidor 2. We've already seen them in the main competition of Robot Wars. Roboteers, stand by. Go on, get that Three, flipper in underneath two, Shunt. Lift one, Shunt away and out of the arena. Go on the attack, you have to attack now. Do not be conservative and defensive. It will not do that. <laughs> I was going to say it wouldn't do any good. What was the point? <laughs> Lobster in reverse. Oh dear. The blade on top of your opposition travels at just 3,000 RPM. That's quite fast. These look pretty tasty. What are they made of? It's a sponge and the, the wheels are from a mini metro. Ah, okay. Nice and grippy. Where'd you get those from then? Did uh, you nick them? No, no, they, they were given to us. <laughs> and uh, we've talked about these pincers before. We think they're just for show. Uh, they are really just for show, yeah. So. Not very impressive. So what's the key strength of your robot? Um, the key strength is the flipper. Um, it can lift about a tonne, which is uh, about a Land Rover. That'll do, won't yeah. it? That'll do if the driving's good enough. Uh, powered by two Bosch 750s. Uh, how did you win the heat? Uh, I think it was pure luck. <laughs> I think they're going to need it. From Norwich, Thermidor 2. No hidden claws in the small print here. They're out in the open and powered by two 750 watt industrial electric motors and aluminium shell. Too strong for seeds dreadnought in the heat. They caught a crab. Hi, we're Team Lobster and this is our robot Thermidor 2. My name's David, this is Eli, this is Ian. It's got a top speed of 15 mile an hour. Our main weapon is our flipper. We've also got these powerful claws. 
since the heat we've had to strengthen this bracket as as you remember they sort of rather snapped off. Hopefully that won't happen again. There's Pussycat now with the team captain Robin Herrick there in the middle. Young David Gribble, the driver, and Thermidor 2. David Harding on the right, Ian Harvey at the controls, Eli Kirkpatrick's 12. Activate. Tested Thermidor 2 in the kitchen at home. Pussycat, we've seen beat Razor. Pussycat, though, at the moment, flipped over by Thermidor 2 once and twice. It's not just the claws here, it is that front flipper on Thermidor 2, and look at the damage sustained there for Pussycat coming down and again just tossed up in the air here, like a, a, a cat on a hot tin roof. Pussycat comes down. All that business about Newton's law, I thought it was when an apple fell out of a tree. This is Pussycat falling out of the air onto the arena floor. There's the ref bot coming in for a little glance. You may have noticed around the necks of the Pussycat boys, pieces of rubber strung. Trophies of war, pieces of razor, collected, strung up, put round their necks as a grisly reminder of previous success. But at this moment in time, I'd say Thermidor 2, just about on top against Robin Herrick's team. Is it now time for Pussycat to come back, trying to sever the claws there with that circular blade? And look at the damage here, slicing in to the very head of the lobster. A great gash appears, dented down the spine as well. And a worry for the Thermidor 2 boys. David Harding, an electronic engineer, Ian Harvey, an automatic inserter. Young Eli's at Heartsea School. Come from Norwich. The Pussycat boys from Gloucester, trying to chase them home though. Pussycat again with a circular blade. Outermost. Powered by electronic motors. Oh, and they came back strongly. This will go to the judges. And I wonder whether the damage sustained by Thermidor 2 at the end will prove too costly. Well, that one's going to go to the judges. But let's have a look at some of the highlights of that amazing battle. Don't forget, they have to judge on star control, damage and aggression. Thermidor 2 is certainly the aggressor there. And again, Pussycat flung up into the air. But from then on, look at the damage sustained by Thermidor. And I think the flipper was immobilised late on. And I think that could be decisive as Pussycat finished very, very strongly. Well, the judges have made a decision. Remember, they're looking at style, control, damage and aggression. And in their wisdom, They've gone for Pussycats! <laughs> Sorry, guys. Well, you started out really quite strongly. You're flipping them backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, but you kind of slowly ground down and we ran out of power. Yeah, we, just, we ran out of gas, and after that we were sitting back or sitting lobster. Yeah, so. sitting lobster. I mean, you're kind of, uh, your flipper stopped working all the way through as yeah, well. Yeah, it's all gas powered. And that saw they've got is quite awesome, isn't it? It really cut you yeah, up towards the end. I think it has cut us up. Yeah, yeah. it's cut you up quite <laughs> yeah. badly, I think. A lot of running repairs there, I'm afraid. Yeah. You'll come back and see us again, won't you? Yeah, we sure will. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Thermidor. Thank you.